Good morning, Ginkgo. How we doing? Alright, so yesterday night I accidentally deleted everything we did yesterday, but I think I got it back. I also added some new stuff. So... Let's see here. I want to come up here. We're going to rename this to state. And then we're going to have a, we do new. We'll make a new token fetcher and we'll say, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna yoink this. We're gonna come here, do that. No. That's awesome.
What do we do differently here? Probably just didn't import start error. Yeah, we didn't. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. So that's good there. And then what up on Any changes to your opinion on Gleam now that you've been in the weeds for a while? Uh, no, I still really, really like Gleam. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how to model um, OTP stuff, but as a whole, I really like it. I think we might want a mailbox on this guy too. Mailbox will be a subject of string. I'm not even sure if this needs to be a Jud server. I had this figured out yesterday and I deleted it by accident. I mean, it's not that, I feel like it's not that weird to want to do something like what I'm doing here. Like I know how I would do this in Go. And like, I feel like if I can model it with Go, it's the same, the same thing, right? I agree, I've been using Elixir for a while, but there's something that in there that doesn't click for me, but Gleam seems to so far. Yeah, I, I like the simplicity, I like the types. I like the syntax a lot too. <clears throat> So the question is, do we need to model this one as a gen server? Because how do I want to use this? I have a token fetcher, right? I have this thing called a token fetcher. We have a redirect server. And if I wanted to use the token fetcher, I really want to do something like let token fetcher equals token fetcher dot new. Like the API, let's just like comment out the API we want, right? So we want new and this is going to take a client so let's just pretend we have a client and we'll say we'll make our mailbox um let mailbox equals process dot new subject but theoretically we wouldn't need a mailbox here right i don't think that would make sense because then we're gonna do something like token fetcher dot fetch. And this will be like let token equals. We wanna do something like this. Oh, gotcha. Okay, right. All 
All right, I've been, I keep getting told about this. We should probably try it at some point. Oh, they wrote it in F sharp. Interesting. So how do I install it? Where's the build or the distribution of this at? Then go inside create a cargo install. And how do I set that up with um I'm going to bookmark this quick and we'll come back to this. Um, so I don't think we want a mailbox. And we'll do token fetcher. Let's call this an access token fetcher. I guess it doesn't need to, right? All right. So this is like the API I want to go for here. And then I also want to copy what I really like some of the abstractions this TypeScript library has. So they have um, they have these auth providers. Like if we go look at a static auth provider, an auth provider that always returns the same initially given creds. I kind of like this idea. We have a refreshing auth provider, which under the covers will refresh the token. And then I think this is probably yeah this probably doesn't refresh anywhere so i kind of like this pattern and then you would give this to your client as the means of authentication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the goal, I think. Token fetcher dot fetch. That will get us this. And I don't think their token fetcher has anything else on it. Token fetcher dot d dot ts. No, it just fetches. With a set of scopes. Do we need that? I don't know. Let me think about that. But I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go take care of the dogs real quick. Uh, I'll be back in like two or three minutes, chat.
And we're back. Okay. So, I'm not sure if the token fetcher should need a new client. I was thinking about this standing on the porch. Um, so why would that need the client? Because we're going to end up having to make a request. But do we need the entire client? Because I want to kind of... I think I want... Well, let's see here. How do we set this up in our auth API? This thing still takes a client. I'm going to end up dealing with circular dependencies unless I copy the client or create a new client type because I want a model where I really like this idea that Twerpl uses where they have these authentication providers. Uh, where are they? Providers like this refreshing auth provider. And I believe that gets given to a client. So if we go back and look at my code in here, an app, we create an auth provider. We give it a client idea, client secret, some implied scopes. And then when we create a client, we give it that auth provider. I kind of like that pattern. Thank you for the follow, by the way, Luca. If you're still around, appreciate you. Hmm. be nice to reuse the client and the code we already have. Maybe we do just copy and paste and be okay with it. Because what is the client actually doing for us here? It's going to be in client.post. Uh, I don't know, Ryan. Probably a lot because of the scopes file. How did you set this up, Ryan? Do you have any concept of like an auth provider or do you just take a token at the top level? Like can your clients auto refresh themselves or is that on the, um, is that on the caller to do? Because the other thing I could do is like we could set up the client to the point where like it could have a configuration option where it would be like refresh, auto refresh or something. And then I don't have to provide
Yeah. I think I'll do that. Okay. All right, I'm... So this seems fine. So let's pull in um, and then we need import.m. Uh, what is the name of our It's just an underscore. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we need to make a new client. And to make a new client, we need the, uh, uh, let's say, let assert, okay. And this will be client ID. And this will be dot m dot get. This will be client ID. What do you mean? What is dot M's API? I just had a good idea though. What's your good idea? M. Oh, it's slash M. That'll be secret. Build the obstruct in runtime config instead of in the supervisor in it. Okay, we do that. So the token fetcher would be like in this case, we don't need these two, right? So we would just change these to all be none. Right, that would be the client. Feels like we need the client secret. So 
then we have that and then we need to make our new token fetcher and this will take our client and then over in our token fetcher we get our new thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay we're going to turn the subject out. Yeah, that looks good. So then let's write our little fetch function here. Um, we're going to basically turn run into fetch. So let's just do that. This will be fetch. So this is where I get so confused about OTP though. Because technically fetch is gonna block until it gets, I don't know, this is so confusing. So let's just say we do this. Let's move this up. And let's tweet and get this posted before I forget about that stuff. Perfect, I love that. Continuing work on OAuth tooling and internals for glitch our Gleam Twitch client. Come hang out. Twitch.tv slash DMM Mulroy post. General. You know what time it is. Great. So let's bump this over. Do that. Each process can run concurrently. Everything in a process is single threaded and synchronous. So, okay. Let's say, all right. Let's say I keep this the same, right? And I get, this will be, if I assign this to something, right, like this should be my code. Result in string. Why does that happen? What does select forever return? Because like theoretically, let's just pretend that's the code, right? I return that and then I would get the code over here. Why does that? Oh, we don't need the mailbox anymore. Okay. And then so theoretically, let's just say we return OK on our token for now. Is, does this make sense, Ryan? Does this pattern make sense? Where this under the covers is going to be like, we have a message and it's going to be, I don't know, let's just say this is going to be fetch. And we'll have a function called uh, function handle message. And we're going to copy what we did um, 
That's getting a little too crazy in my ear. Redirect server, right? We we basically copy this like little looping pattern where we get a message of type message in our state, which is just our token fetcher. And we're gonna return a next message and token fetcher. We're gonna do that and we're gonna just match on message and it'll be fetch. And under fetch, this is where we do like pub function, like uh, not pub function, we'll do like function handle fetch. And in here, I guess this state would need Yeah, exactly, Madlib. I'm still very much learning OTP though, so do not take what I'm doing for best practices at all. I'm gonna actually, once I get this working, I'm gonna ask uh, for uh, some code reviews in the Gleam Discord. Uh, so we, let's say we handle fetch. Is this reply with common convention, Ryan, in Erlang and Elixir? Uh, okay, so if we model it this way, right? So fetch needs a um, reply with. I feel like reply to makes more sense in my head than reply with. And this would be a subject with a result of string and I guess nil. With gen server, you can spawn a separate process to do async work, but not immediately reply to the caller by using. <laughs> right, this would be our gen server. Sure. And this would be, I don't think this needs another So let's fix that. It's going to be replied to 
and we'll just go down and copy that. Yoink that. It's gonna need another. <laughs> no. This would almost be like this. Okay. Then in here, we would basically do what we were doing down below. Okay, I'm starting. I'm starting to figure it out here. Let's just assume we get a reply to in here, and let's make this actually handle fetch, and this will take a reply to. And we can get rid of the mailbox. And that will be you. <laughs> sure. Okay. We start our redirect server. We open the browser. We get our code. And then we need to get... This is also going to... This should just take our client. This will take our state, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the are token fetcher. And then uh, this can just do let reply to. In fact, I don't think we need the reply to even on the fetcher right because if we do handle message we get the fetch the public function right so if we do pub function fetch and this is going to get reply to and it's gonna be this right there. And we just say actor dot I think it's gonna be send. And this will be token fetcher. token fetcher, token fetcher, and we say token fetcher, and then we say fetch, and we say reply to, right?
What is this upset about? Oh, right, because this is, um... This is really... A subject of message. Right, subject... Of message. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And I think that's how I did the redirect server too. If we look, server subject message, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and actually, let's go back to what I just had there. Send. Okay, so that's the public API right there. If we go back to our Gleam, or our main function, right, in here, we're going to say, like, let, um, I don't know, we'll just call it mailbox, equals process dot new subject. And this will be a subject that will be a, a subject of result string or nil. And in here, we pass our token fetcher and our mailbox. And this gets us back a, we, we actually don't do anything there, right? Because then we just do our selecting thing because it's async, right? Uh-huh. I'm starting to see token fetcher. We do the same thing here down here and we're like yo what up here's my access token and we'll wait on our mailbox boom it's me up from LAX I love this song chat it's a bop all right something like this I think this feels pretty good I need to install the plugin. Can somebody link me to the plugin for uh, the emotes in chat? Okay. Cool. I'm re reasonably happy with that. Where are our errors? Baby, she's the best. It's me up from LX. So here we're going to call uh, handle fetch. And we're gonna pass it our message. Well, not really, we're gonna pass it our reply to. In fact, we'll just copy the same function signature. Token fetcher, which will be um, our subject of message. My baby, she's the best. Well, this will be state, I guess. Handle fetch state reply to, yeah, 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 yeah. And then this guy needs to return this, right? We're gonna return a yoink. Isn't it better Twitch TV? I think it is. Install for Chrome. Add to Chrome, add extension. Uh, okay. Does it just work? There we go. All right, that was driving me crazy. All right, perfect. All right, so now we, uh, the redirect server needs, um, 
we'll make our own mailbox here. So let's say let mailbox is going to be process dot new subject. Mm -hmm. And this will be a subject of string. And down here to yeah. This will be mailbox. Uh-huh. Once we have our code, how do I get the string out of this thing? Uh, we need a uh, Gleam Erlang. I need, oh man, allergies. Process, 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 process. What is receive? Oh, that's a timeout. Select forever returns an A. So that should be a string then. I think my types are, or my LSP is just upset. Uh, maybe we go try that other LSP server. Glass. This wasn't the right link. Damn it. Somebody shared that earlier. Does anyone have the other glass server? Glass gleam. GitHub. I don't remember where I put it because I don't think this is the right one. Uh, let me check my history quick. Glass. There we go, it's this one. How do I, do I just download? Do I just build from source? Check my phone. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Got a sick dog, be right back chat.
Yo, yo, we're back. Okay, sorry, Winnie threw up on the floor. Lovely times. Always a great time being a, uh, a dog owner. So this is gonna take a reply to, which isn't used yet. And this needs to return a actor.next. Dude, it's so frustrating because I swear they always throw up like there will be like hardwood floor or tile like an inch away from where they finally end up throwing up. And it's like you could not have just like turned your head an inch to the left. You had to get it on the carpet. Shake my head. All right, so this is gonna get replied to, describe the world. Thank you for the follow, uh, Adnis. So how do we respond in our loop? We say actor.continue. Okay, we can just do actor.stop after the handle fetch. We'll just say actor.stop. Okay, this looks good. Or maybe we can just say actor continue. And this will just take our state. Actor dot continue and this will just take state. There we go. I swear, Nightshade, it's on purpose. The good thing is the one dog, Baxter, the tiny one, I can pick him up and get him somewhere. And like he makes very distinct noises when he's about to throw up. So like, but the big dogs, they're a little bit harder to move. All right, so this is gonna be a string when we get it. Yeah, okay, so this is looking good. This is looking good, chat. So we say handle message, then we handle fetch. And handle fetch is going to go through, do all this stuff, get that. And then we want to get the client out of our state. So we say uh, client will be state equals state dot client let. Where are our errors at? We have errors somewhere. I can feel it in the LSP. There it is. <laughs> you know you're writing Gleam when you can feel the errors in another file. Uh, what is this supposed to be? That will be off. Oh wait, double import. Right, we need, um, this is gonna come from import Gleam slash Erlang. Let me just make sure Justine doesn't need me. I accidentally texted Justine the uh, Nana sign of life text, which was awkward. And subject, the subject that must come from here, right? Type subject. And then you send Nana a dick pic. Oh, Ryan. So where's our fetch? We get our token fetcher in a mailbox. So 
expected type subject message found that's not what I would have expected this can become handle message now yeah Oh, I have to do let assert, okay. I'm not gonna lie, the let assert syntax is so freaking useful for testing this stuff. All right, so we have our mailbox. Uh, this will get our access token. Mailbox for access token. Yeah. Token, we fetch, and then we can wait for the response in our mailbox. That looks pretty good. Then over here, we get our client, and we wanna really uh, go to auth, API auth. We're gonna import this, so we'll come down here, and we'll yank that. And we do auth, and then we do, let's see here. We call get token, but we're gonna need to make a request body first. So where's my make new refresh, new client, no. new authorization code grant. So we'll do delete that and we'll say let request equals auth dot new authorization code grant and that will get our uh, state dot client we'll get our code which we just got from the other process and our redirect uri which is gonna have to come from somewhere but we'll just hard code it for now. It might be at the top anyways. Yeah, we're just hard coding it for now. We'll fix that in a bit. The world. Uh, so that's gonna have to be a URI of string. And this will be URI. Then we should sort these. And then we sort those. All right, great. Okay. Classic Kyle. Classic Ryan Winchester. URI dot of string from string probably, or it's probably parse. Oh, it returns a result. Son of a bitch. Uh, redirect. Let assert, okay. Redirect URI equals URI dot parse uh, U. <laughs> and this will be redirect URI. There we go. So now we have a, yeah, 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 that looks good. That can return a, what? Ah, I guess it does return a result. Then we come down here and we say, uh, we'll say let assert, okay. And we'll get a response equals auth dot get token. And we'll pass that our state dot client. 
and then we pass it our request. And this ends up being our get token response, which really should use. I made a. Maybe I should put it. This access token, I should just dump it in here. Mm, no, I kind of like it where it was. We can just import it. Uh, well, let's not worry about the access token right now. We can keep it as this type. Daffunct. Daffunct is a great name. Thank you for the follow, by the way. So then we get this response, which is a get token response. And let's just say we get, we will say, how did I do this over here? I think it's just actor.send and we'll send this to reply to and we'll send uh, the request, the response dot access token. Reply to, and actually this should be, this should be okay. There we go. Look at that, that's beautiful. I like it chat. This is Gleam, yep. Which you can find more about Gleam at https slash slash gleam dot run. Go to throw my mug on the charger BRB. Hi I think I'm actually going to replace my Ember mug, Ryan, with something like um, Desk Mug Warmer. Something like one of these. Because the battery, the battery is really good. But like if I drink, if I want to have two cups back to back, the battery will die halfway through my other one. So I'm thinking I just buy one of these and keep it on my desk. Even like the high quality ones, like I'm going to drop some bones. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, theoretically this might work. There's a lot of moving parts here, but it could work. I do like my Ember mug though. The Ember mug is great, especially for that first cup of coffee. Or if I like, if I wait till like nine o'clock, if I wait an hour between cups of coffee, it will fully charge back up and then it will, it, the battery lasts about an hour and a half. Um, and I've had it for like two years now. So it's not like the, it, the battery is degrading. Token fetcher. We'll just say, uh, let's bring in IO, and we'll just say IO dot print 
wine access token. Right, this will be All right, let's see if this works. Are we even building would be a good question to ask. Rebar three is not found. Do I not have a flake Nix in here? That seems fine. Why do I not see rebar three? No, I'm using Nix. I'm on Gleam 1.0. I don't think they didn't release 1.1 yet, did they? I know they have been getting working towards it. Yeah, they haven't cut a release yet. I'm on the most recent version. For some reason, my, um, this should be okay now. Yeah. For some reason, my Nix Flake is, uh, not bringing in, if I do Nix Flake update, that's probably what my problem was. The lock file is probably wrong. But we're building, which is interesting. Advanced electromagnetic energy. Huh. Does it... What temperature does it keep it at?
Do we know what temperature it is? Because I know what temperature I like heating it to, which is 135. Well, pretty close, 130. Well, this one's sold out. <laughs> 130 would be fine. Oh my God, this is taking forever. So assuming this works, which is a big assumption, what is the next thing we need to do? We need to add in uh, capabilities for refreshing. Which, how does this work? When we go in here, do I have this code pulled? I should just pull twerple off. Yeah, let's go clone that repo. Well, I guess I can just look at the JS. It's not that big deal. Uh, is this the type definition? Yeah, it is. Uh, does this package with the source? No, it doesn't. That's okay. So refreshing, so we, do this. What state does this have on here? It keeps a map, right? Because it can handle multiple users. User token fetchers. App token fetcher. Okay. This is a little bit more advanced than we want. There's probably like a get token in here. There has to be get access token for user. This probably has to have a check in it if it's expired. Oh, this is weird. What syntax is this? Is this immediately invoking a function? Has anyone seen this syntax before? Uh, uh, just give me a node. Yeah. Uh, let's just say const ID is x to x. So we have our identity function, and then it's saying that we can do zero ID, and we can immediately invoke that with foo. What? I have never seen that syntax for an immediately invoked function expression. What does the zero do? I have never seen this in my 17 years of writing JavaScript. Oh, it abuses the comma operator. I, I know about that. All right.
That's so weird. Why wouldn't you just invoke the function in minified? Yeah, I know it's an immediately invoked function expression. I've just never, see normally you see immediately invoked function expressions like this, right? Like it normally looks like this guy right here. Right, but that would be ID and then you just invoke it with foo. Like I get this, right? That that makes sense. I've seen that. I just don't understand the zero. It's not currying. Huh. That's interesting. All right, so what does this? It gets a token, gets a fetcher, cached refresh failures. All right, that means they failed before, and the fetcher. So the fetcher must try to do the refresh? Is that true? Filtered scopes, blah, 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 Q promise, blah, 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 blah. So this executor uh, doesn't seem like anything is super fancy in here. What is the executor? Takes, that's the fetcher. Which, all right, so we're using an event system in here. It seems overly complicated. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay. And that failed where? Line 12. I'm going to have to blur my screen quick. Uh, you can um, compile to JavaScript and generate um, TypeScript types. I'll show you that in uh, a second, uh, Sienna. Ah, well, that's part of the problem. I lost my environment file. Dot mrc. Okay. And this will say use flake. So that's why we weren't getting rebar. And then in here, we'll say export. Okay. One second, chat. I got to deal with some sensitive tokens. Here, Sienna. Uh, here is an example of how um, Gleam generates JavaScript. So Gleam can compile to Erlang or to JavaScript, and it can also generate TypeScript types. 
And there will be an example at that gist. Almost ready, chat. We got some stuff building. What is uh what is everyone else working on today? Anything exciting? Anyone working on a side project right now? We are almost ready. Gleam. If I echo that. Perfect. Perfect. Clear and reset. Reset and clear. Okay. Very quick here. Do a dirt and allow. Okay. Gleam run. All right, we're getting close, chat. All right, check this out, chat. So when I run our script, we're making some good progress here. Let me actually close this out over here because that opened on the wrong window. Uh, now when we do Gleam run, which the code that's gonna run is right here. So we're gonna read in two environment variables we're gonna create a mailbox. We're gonna create a new API client. We're gonna create a token fetcher. We're gonna to try to do a fetch. We're gonna wait for that all to go through and attempt to um, call back to localhost. That might be our problem actually, now that I think about it. Uh, redirect server, token fetcher. Let's add this. I wanna get my things in line. I want that to be two. Okay, that makes sense now. In token fetcher, we redirect it there. When do we create our server? I think the redirect server, the last one is that. And what does that default to? Redirect server by default. We'll use redirect there. That looks good. And we start on port 3000. Okay. Wrapping a Python script as an RPM and storing it in Artifactory, we can just store it as a Python patch and use it natively with pip. I don't know too much about Python, but I know managing Python virtual environments is a pain in the ass. All right, so when we run this chat, we say Gleam run, it opens over here, but we get a 404 not found. So why is that happening? Let me make sure there's not something sensitive in this URL quick. State is foobar, client ID is good, doesn't look like anything is bad there. That all looks good. That looks good. I wonder if our redirect server is not actually starting correctly. No, it has to be, right? Because we're, we're seeing a 404. So, if I bring over yak and we say hello, yeah. So we know our server is running. So we can say hello. Uh, can we get it? Okay. Now it crashed. That's okay. Uh, the OTP will not. Um, 
there, I don't think there are JavaScript bindings for OTP to compile to JavaScript. You would use like Gleam JavaScript instead of Gleam OTP. And what you would do is um, you would effectively write FFIs for both languages if you wanted to support both, where you support both promise-based asynchronicity and then OTP-based asynchronicity if you want to compile for both targets. But um, I'm definitely not writing this to compile to JavaScript. There's like zero reason for this to target JS. Right here. Yeah. Why is that happening? Oh, is this the problem we had yesterday where it was like, I had a bunch of new lines. Yeah, that was the problem, wasn't it? That should be better. So let's try that again. Uh, let's go clean run. Get in there. Get in there, get in there. So let's say, rather than doing the rest of this immediately, let's just respond with the code and see if that works. Okay, so that went the whole way through. So the thing that failed was this bit over here. Nice chat. Nice chat. That went the whole way through to our main process and then sh hopefully shut down. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's so fucking cool. So to walk through what just happened, because we're almost, basically all the OTP stuff we worked on today is working. So from our main, um, Yeah, that wasn't the token, Ryan. That was just the code. Um, so what happens is we create this little mailbox, right? And this mailbox is just a way for some other asynchronous process to put a value in and we can watch that mailbox in this process and take the value out when we receive it. So we create a new API client and then we create a new token fetcher, both nothing super crazy. And then we say token fetcher dot fetch and we pass in our mailbox and under the covers what the token fetcher does is it spins up a temporary http server with one route on it which is slash redirect it opens the user's web browser and redirects them to the oauth redirect or the oauth authentication thing which once you authenticate with your twitch account it will use the redirect parameter to redirect to that with a bunch of other extra data in the url params so then it redirects there. That hits our local temporary server that we spun up and we get the code from that. And once that happens, we sit over here and we wait for that code right here. And then once we get that code, we shut down our HTTP server and then we send the code back to the caller and bada bing, bada boom. Super cool. I love this. This is so nice. Okay, um, 
what do we need to do? We need to fix our uh, fetch call because this guy is failing. Um, where is it? This bit of code right here is failing. So let's delete that, GC that, uncomment these. So this is, actually I wonder, we'll just say foobar here real quick. There's a chance that this could fail. I doubt it, but we'll see. Okay, so that's not, it is this part that's failing here. So rather than asserting, let's come over here and do this and we'll just get response. And uh, we'll just IO debug the response. God, that's so nice. In OCaml, we have to jump through so many hoops to debug print. All right, so now we're gonna run this and I have to blur just in case my secret got leaked. Error client, no access token. Oh, right. Chicken and the egg problem. Right. So, we want to go to client, uh, no access token. Yeah, so this is where it's fucking up right here, this headers. So I wonder what headers we need for um, Twitch dev make your first call and we want to go to authentication and we want to go to authorization and then we fetch to this i don't think it needs any headers does it it doesn't so we want to do We need a way to do unauthenticated requests. So we could do this by adding like a third query parameter. We could also, what does our request type look like? It's opaque. Helix API request, it's an auth API request. Okay. So we could do, uh, let's see here. We do a pub function. Um, is auth request. And we'll get a request that is a Twitch API request and we'll return a bool and we'll copy this yoink you and this will be false and this will be true we can get rid of that do the same there and then we'll do the same thing and we'll say is helix and we'll switch these up this will be true That'll be false. So that gives us some information. And then we can make another function here and it'll be um, 
This doesn't really need to be a public function, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think that needs to be public. We'll say function auth headers or un unauthenticated request headers. Sure, it's wordy, but it does what I need. Client, client. In fact, I don't even care about typing this. We're just gonna come in here and we're gonna say the only one we need is okay. And we'll return content type. And that would be application slash JSON. In fact, that's probably getting overwritten. We might not even need to do headers. Do we override the headers here? Yeah, we do. We set it to URL form encoded, so we don't even need to do this function. So we can actually one byte. One byte. Is it one or one? Um, it's typed the same way as OCaml. It's still statically typed. It's just inferred. One byte. Okay. So in here, we just got to say, um, What is the best way to do this? We only need to do this work if it is everything's an expression. So given that everything's an expression, we can say case, um, we'll say API request dot is auth request we'll pass in the request if it's true we'll just say what's up god damn it oh okay that's not me if it's true we will just return um an empty list Right, say okay. And if it's false, we will return headers client. There we go. You'll catch me someday. Catch me outside, how about that? Yeah, there we go, chat. All right, so that should work there. Let's see if this runs now. I'm uh, gonna blur the screen again. Error, no access token. Why? Why would we need an access token? I just fixed this problem. So that would tell me this is resulting in false. And what is happening in API request headers? Nothing crazy here. In fact, we can change this. This is, does not need to be as verbose as it is. S 
So, like we don't do anything in here. The only place we do no access token is right here, right? Let's just grab on that just to make sure. Yeah, that's the only place we ever return it. So we shouldn't be coming into this headers at all. Which tells me that we're not making a auth request in our API slash auth. Let's rotate that, close that. Down here, new auth request? What? Wrong function. So we call new auth request, that goes to here. It does return an auth API request. Why is this wrong? Does anyone see a hiccup in my logic here? Okay, well, let's try if I do this, right? Like this 100% should not let it fail with this. Okay. Well, now I have to go, <laughs> the one time I didn't fucking expire this, uh, I have to see what those tokens are because those are probably sensitive. Which I can just go yoink you. You're the access token and I can expire that. My other tab, chat, you got about a minute to pawn my Twitch account. Revoke token. Too late. All right, so that token's revoked. So this is for some reason evaluating to false. This case right here is evaluating to false, which it calls this and it says case on the request. If it's a Helix request, it returns false, and if it returns a auth API request, which I swear has to be true. So if we follow the flow here in the token fetcher, we say we get our code, and then we say new authorization code get grant request, and then we say auth.get token, which if we come over to auth.get token, is this function right here. And we call API new auth request, right? That we already saw. If we go into our API request, that returns an auth API request, right there it is. We set some things on it and then we pass it into client.post, which if we go to client.post, case api request is auth request no i would get a type error
Let me just try blurring one more time and make sure I'm not. Weird. Okay, so. Yeah. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go to our client file and stick an IO debug. We're gonna come down here. And we wanna put that in, I think it's a post request still. We do a post request. So in here, What's the issue? It was the missing token header. Uh, the, the problem is we're trying to avoid calling this right here. So we're just gonna do an IO debug and we're gonna put that on the request quick. And I'm gonna blur this cause that has my client secret. Free gleam run. It makes a Helix API request. What in the world? What in the world, chat? How? All right, let's back up to the very beginning. So uh, one byte, this log that it was a Helix API request, which as far as I can tell should not be true. So when we go into auth get token, we say new auth request. And when we go to new auth request, let's go to API request, new auth request. We say request new, set scheme, and it goes auth request from request which I, <laughs> I literally do not understand how we would be possibly wrapping in a Helix API request. One of these might be wrong. One of these might have a double helix. There's the problem. Found the problem. Right there it was. And right here. Copy and paste errors. All right. So what was happening is that uh, when we were in here and we called set body, when we were calling these three functions, it was changing the type. 
typing would have fix, fixed it though, where would typing have fixed it? Because both the Helix request and the API request are the same type. They're just different variants of a Twitch API request. Oh, literally typing. Good point, Raw Hat. You, you make a very valid point. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove that IO debug from client. And we can remove that. And if we go back to here, we don't want to debug the response. Uh, we can ignore that for now. Let's assert this is okay still. And this shouldn't leak anything sensitive. So YOLO, worst case, we can go and uh, I've got my stuff ready to First try. First try chat. Let's go. That's sick. So if we do this now, I'm gonna log a token and then I'm gonna expire it immediately just to make sure response dot access token. In fact, I'm not, I'm just gonna blur my screen. Cause I don't feel like doing that. So if we do this. Nice. Nice chat. We got the access token the whole way through the parent process. All right, let me reset and clear that. All right. This is super awesome. I'm gonna commit this real quick after we resolve our warnings. Uh, I don't need that. Uh, let's go ahead and do a Gleam build. See if we have any other warnings. We do not. And we'll say uh, get token works. Huzzah. Git push. That's so cool. Beautiful. All right, now I dig it. Okay. Now we might need to do some refactoring on our client. No. Oh, we should refactor to use our uh, API token is what we should do. Let's make a, um, I wonder if we should make a types package. Raw hat, is that common in Gleam to make a types package module? Because that would help me prevent some circular dependencies, I think. Because I could move you, throw you in there, and then I could also take a scope, right? There's no network request in, in here. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, this looks like a great thing to put in there. Types, paste you in there. That's gonna cause some build issues over in here. Where are the build errors? It can be an auth. Glitch types access token, okay. This will be from types. Oh, well that worked. 
really easy. All right, so we want to come and we have like um, some stuff over here that we probably want to move into our types. Uh, we'll say grant dot gleam. We'll open that there. We'll yoink you and you. And this will be two string. And we'll just quickly write a from string. Pub function from string. This will take a stir, which is a string. And we're going to return a grant type result. And that'll just be nil. Uh, then we'll say case stir and the authorization code that will return OK. Authorization code. This will be client credentials. Client credentials. This will be refresh token. And device code. And this will be implicit. And every other case will be a uh, error. No. Great. That looks good. And then we'll rip this out. And this will actually be types. And we'll yank that, we'll get types.grant. Next is refresh token, same deal, bang, bang. And then grant type, this will be grant dot to string. And same deal here, and same deal here. And now that's fixed, are we building? Great, all right. Now, um, We have this access token. So I think we want to change this to be an access token rather than this body. So if we come here, we have this guy over here. Access token, token. Let me sort these quick. They are sorted. Token expires in, right, these would need to be sorted. That'll make the... Hey Ryan, do you know um, uh, what unit of time uh, expires in, is in from the API? Is it in milliseconds? It's in seconds, okay. Thank you. So this instead is going to return, let's write a decoder for this. So we'll say pub function decoder. And this is going to return a decoder of access token. And then we'll say dynamic, and that's gonna be five. We can basically copy this. Paste that, 
and this will be access token. Can I pass my own values to decoders? I'm gonna close tabs to the right. And move you over. And let's pull up the standard library. And I wanna look at D dynamic and then decode. Let's just look at decode two. I guess it can just be a constant function, right? That takes anything and returns. No. I want to, well, yeah, so I need to derive some values. Um, which is fine. So we'll do um, type access token response, I guess. And this is going to look exactly like this. In fact, we can copy this type and just rename it. So the S uh, get token response. Uh, and this will be access token response and we can decode that right we'll say if you were oh this is just getting the decoder though which is fine How do I want to handle this? What is the function signature for a decoder? We're gonna to have to do some custom stuff here. I think a decoder just takes a dynamic Yeah, it's this function signature. Let's just say, this will be raw, raw. Access token expires in refresh token scope token. All oh, right, I probably need to import some stuff. Oh, we have a token type. So we can yoink you. Um, where does the token type get used? 
token type decoder gets used in response. Okay, so that can get moved into there too. So let's yoink you. This is actually a good example of what I want to copy. What did I just break in here? Let's grab all of this. Uh, we'll grab you down to here. What? Delete to there. Then we come over here and we dump this in. And none of these are public. Maybe they are. And that comes back from twitch.dev. Grant type, token type is bearer. So the token type sits on the access token. which I don't think I care about, actually. Yeah, I don't think I care about that at all. Because we can just not decode that field. But that code actually was a good example of what we want to do. So in here, our decoder, we have this raw one, right? So we'll say function data, which will be a uh, dynamic. Which probably got import that. Type dynamic down here. And we wrap that. And then we do That gets moved into here. This will be const raw decoder equals not const, Jesus Christ. Delete that. Yeah, that's okay. We'll wait to type this. So we say we get our raw decoder and then we'll say let uh, raw access token equal raw decoder Result dot try. Well, what happens if I just return my raw decoder right here? What does it tell me the return type is of this? It's a function to a function, yeah, right. How do we use our decoders? I haven't done this for like a week now.
Because theoretically, we should then do like... Um, I'm actually not confused, or I'm not sure how I want to do this. All right, I think I got this. Yeah, okay, I got it. This is how we're gonna do this. We need to add these fields. So we get expires in, we'll say access token, and we'll say expires in will be uh, raw access token. Is it colons? I never remember the right syntax. I think it's raw access token dot expires in. And then it's obtained at will be, um, we need now. Let now is going to equal, I think I can get this from Erlang slash process or maybe just Erlang. Another dog threw up? All right, chat, I'll be right back again. All right, chat, I will be right back. I'm gonna run an ad quick while I do this.
Okay, we are back. Um, chat, if you see any other dog that's not the tiny dog right there eating from this food bowl, let me know because he should be the only one eating that. Back to eat your breakfast. My dog threw up last night, had to give him a bath this morning. Oof. Uh, Winnie threw up this morning and Baxter threw up this morning, which is, it's strange for Winnie to throw up. Uh, Baxter throws up when he's hungry, which is weird, but it's a thing. From raw access token. Uh, so we should be able to say something like, uh, I think it'll be Erlang. So there's system time? There is. And then we need a time unit. We need seconds. Erlang dot second. Erlang. So now, we'll do that. Is that an integer? Uh, what is now? Baxter, eat that food. And then we'll say, uh, we'll just say obtained at, obtained now. And then we'll say, oh, I guess we don't even need an expires in. Cause we can derive that. And that is not a result, right? No, it's just an it. Cool. Okay, obtained at will be now. Right, okay, so we need expires at, obtained at, refresh token will be raw access token dot refresh token, and then scopes will be raw access token dot scopes, and the token itself will be raw access token dot access token. Right, that's not an option. Yeah. Okay, and hopefully this is the right type signature. Yep, it's exactly what we wanted. Yoink, paste that in there. And then up here, we say result.map, and that'd be from raw access token. We need to bring in results. Paste that, find O, change to the end of the line, whoops, the result. And I guess we can delete that and we don't need an option. Okay, cool, are we building? Sweet, there we go, chat. So we have our decoder now. Our decoder should be dynamic to, yep. Beautiful. We need to bring in the decode error, which we just removed. Decode error. Ah, what? I literally copied that type. Oh, right. It is a function that takes dynamic and returns how do I even annotate that? Yeah, that's what we want. There we go. Which in fact, 
there's a alias we can use for this. We can just say decoder of access token, right? Should be able to come up here and say type decoder. Yeah. And we should be able to build. Watch that football chat. There is a there is a golden retriever just waiting to pounce on that. Look at that. Look at him just sitting there. I know I clipped that part of the screen. He thinks he's sneaky. Bodhi. What are you doing, big man? You're not trying to eat your brother's food, are you? One time we caught him sneaking, which I've talked about before, but... All right, so now we have this access token. Alright, we should have a way to check if a token is expired too. So yeah, we're gonna do second. So that looks good. Now we want to go back to auth and we want to start using this structure. So rather than our get token request returning this type here, right? We can get rid of this. And this is going to be a uh, access token. That will be an access token. Do something like this. We gotta go import that. Shift paste that, change that, and that will be access token. And uh, type access token. And then we have an error. Get token response decoder. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted the. All right. Let's walk this back just a little bit real quick. That's what we need. And then this will be access token. And we'll go up here and drop that in. And this will be access token. And we need type access token. And then this doesn't become the decoder. This is <laughs> this will be can we do a decode one? And then we do this, and then we would do access token dot decoder here. <laughs> That's so sick. 
That's so sick. Composing JSON decoders is really nice. No, sorry, I was uh I was messaging off screen. regular arrow keys for Mata. I actually use a 60% keyboard. So for my arrow keys, I, I hold caps. And when I press caps, it enables a second layer on my keyboard. And when that second layer is active, uh, H, J, K, and L are the arrow keys. So even outside of them, these are what I use as my arrow keys. So basically I just use HJKL as my arrow keys everywhere. I yo same. Let's go. Seems hard to use, not hard to use at all. I think I, uh, I think I navigate around pretty well in my code here. My hands just stay in home row the entire time. This will be now access token. Any plans on going split keep? Uh, if I could find a split keep that let me have hot swappable switches and to use, um, I don't know. Right now I don't have any reason to. Uh, I don't really have any wrist pain. I like this keyboard a lot. I like the idea of a split one because of the thumb clusters, but I like using Glorious Pandas.
Yeah, yep, they're roofed. You can swap some glorious pandas into a Moonlander. Yeah, I need to check out Moonlanders. That's what everyone keeps recommending to me. All right, we're building. We're gonna blur this and run it quick. Nice chat, it worked. So if we look here, I'm just gonna uh, revoke this token really fast so it's not valid and I'll show you this whole flow working. In fact, I'll just show the whole flow working right now and we'll just revoke the token quickly. All right, so after like basically a week of work, we have this full OAuth flow working. So when we come over here and we do Gleam Run, what's gonna happen is we're going to, just to walk through this whole flow, we create a mailbox, which means that lets us uh, transfer data between processes. But we create this mailbox that's gonna get an access token. We create a new API client and then we create a new token fetcher, which uses our API client. We then say token fetcher dot fetch, and we pass the mailbox to it, right? So when the token fetcher finally gets our access token from Twitch, it's gonna put it in this mailbox. And in the meantime, we can sit here and we can wait and we can watch that mailbox, right? We just sit here forever until that mailbox gets a value in it. And then we pull the value out, which will be our access token, and then we have it, right? Bada bing, bada boom. Inside the token fetcher, what happens is we uh, essentially handle this message. We go to handle fetch. Handle fetch creates a new mailbox that's gonna receive a string. This is our code mailbox. Uh, we then spin up a temporary HTTP server using mist and uh, that sits in the background and it has one endpoint on it called slash redirect. We then open the browser and we go to the redirect URL or we go to the authentication URL for Twitch. That will use the redirect URL in the query param and redirect to that, which hits our redirect server. Our redirect server then grabs the key, which happens right here. So. Uh, let's look at the router. When we look at our router, we hit the path, we go into here, we get the code and the CSERF token, and we send the response back, and we put the value into the mailbox. Right? So we say process.send after. We put the code in the mailbox, we give the HTTP server a chance to respond. So back in our token fetcher, we sit here and similar to the parent process, we sit and watch our mailbox until we get a value. So we get our code back. We then use that code and we make a request uh, to auth.get token. We get that, we shut down our um, we shut down our miss server. We send that to the mailbox in the parent and the parent gets it here, bada bing, bada boom. So now when we run the whole process, we say gleam run, Boom, you guys missed this open up over here. But this all happened over here. We get our access token. So here's our actual access token and here's our refresh token. I can grab this and we're gonna go revoke that. Boom, that's now revoked. And yeah, it's that easy, chat. That's the whole freaking flow. That's awesome. How is Gleam? Nice to code in? Yes, I really, really like uh, coding in Gleam. Sweet. So that works. Finish. Um, token fetcher, uh, yeah, push. 
Uh, let's go find someone. It's a couple minutes early chat, but uh, I'm going to go uh, take care of some things around the house before I get started for work here. So we're going to go wrap up 10 minutes early and find somebody to raid. This feels like a good leaving off point since we have everything working. I don't think uh, we'd really make any progress anywhere. Um, we've got some Zig. We've got Cherie. Cherie's playing video games. Yeah, they they uh, are for privacy. Um, let's see what Alicia's doing. She hasn't streamed for a long time. She had gotten cancer. Let's raid her. I haven't seen her on long. Sounds like she's uh, hopefully doing well. Let's go show her some support. It's a um. It's a OBS add-on by Finite Singularity, who's another streamer. If you look up like, um, um, like hexagonal blur Finite Singularity, you should find it. Um, if you come back tomorrow, I'll find you like the actual link and show you how to install it. Um, but yeah, let's go raid uh, Alicia and uh go show her some love she's been off streaming for quite a while because of cancer and we'll be back tomorrow morning 7 a.m have a lovely tuesday chat thank you for hanging out